Hello everybody and welcome to another one of these uh, short half an hour-ish um, yoga classes with me, Jess. Um, I teach something that I call literary yoga, so I frame my classes with a piece of literature, usually a novel, but not always. Um, and if you have never done yoga before, uh, first I'd like to say you'll be absolutely fine with me here today. I will demonstrate pretty much everything and I will be very verbally clear. Um, but if that's still not comforting enough, then there is an introduction to yoga that I've filmed on this YouTube channel. So if you scroll down a little bit, there's about five minutes of me talking about what yoga is if you want to bring yourself more into the right headspace for it. Otherwise, if you're ready, you're gonna settle yourself down on your mat or in your space now, in your Sukhasana. It's an easy seated pose. Now it does not have to be cross-legged. I'm doing a version of cross leg that I will talk about in a second. Um, it can be sitting with your legs stretched out in front of you. You can sit on your heels, so kneeling with your seat down if you prefer. You just have to find something that allows you a sense of ease, but without uh, losing a sense of alertness. So you don't want to be completely lying down you can if you really want to, but usually we want to try and stay a little bit more switched on at the beginning here. So we're looking for an upright seated position that allows us to find a neutral spine. So what I mean by that is not that we are squeezing our shoulders up and puffing our chest forwards in a desperate attempt to be taller. You let those shoulders drop down. You let the natural curve of the spine stay in place but you keep it upright. You keep a sense of lift coming up through the crown of the head. So starting at the sit bones, traveling up through the spinal column, up through the crown of the head, that's where the feeling of lift is, not in the shoulders, not in the belly, which at the moment you have relaxed and you've let it drop down. You can close your eyes if you like. Breathing through your nose if you can. It's not a problem if you can't. The most important thing is that you start to make your breath steady. So spend some time here at the beginning making that the focus point. Making sure that your inhale drops low into the belly. And that your exhale makes you feel a little softer, a little freer. That inhale and exhale roughly match each other in length and depth. So while you're sitting here breathing, I will just quickly mention what's happening here with my leg. You might see that there's a cushion underneath my left leg and that it's not tucked in. If you have done my other classes, then you will already know this. Um, that I'm trying to make my way through a very fun uh, knee injury. And um, we're not there yet, but we're a lot better. But it still means that there are a lot of positions and poses that I can't do in the way that I would like you to do them. When that's happening, I will make it as clear as I can that I am doing it slightly differently for the reason of my leg um, and that I would rather you did it in a different way. For this class, I'm using a very short novel, it's really more of a novella, called And the Bride Closed the Door by Ronit Matalon. The plot of this book is in the title. A bride has locked herself in her bedroom on her wedding day, and the only words she has said are not getting married. She says them quite a few times. Family members, um, the groom, her now not in-laws, all gather in the flat and outside the door in mounting desperation to try to get her out. So this novel won a very prestigious prize in Israel um, and the prize was awarded to the author the day before she sadly died. So at the prize ceremony, her daughter 
gave a speech on her behalf. And in it she said, there is something sad yet a little bit funny in the fact that I, just like my locked in bride, am not attending this wedding. But I hope it is clear that, just like in the novel, absence is sometimes as significant as presence, and that some kind of wedding, legal, semi-legal or barely legal, is still occurring. To say that this book is only about absence and how we react to it is, as ever with any book, a fairly simplistic take. It's about lots more than that. It's about family dynamics, Israeli wedding culture, um, buried secrets. But absence sits at the center of the story and of the characters' motivations and feelings and actions and words. The reader is invited to view how these characters respond to that absence when what they expected was not only presence, but full participation. And that's the world that we are in now and have been for about a year. Absence where we hoped for more than presence, but full participation. And we can still learn how to react to this and how to handle it. It's not over yet. We can still learn what to do, how to improve our situation for ourselves when our expectations of presence are not met. He was amazed by the tranquility, by this cradled, placid feeling he was immersed in, like a warm bath. Surprised, he smiled to himself, a thin smile with his head on his knees, at how sweet the sensation of having defected from the battlefield could be. And he had defected at this moment, in both body and mind, hardly bothering to look out from a distance at what he had abandoned, entirely devoted to a new and completely different expanse that had opened up inside him with different inquiries. Did he love Margie? Really love her? Really love who she was, she herself, as distinct from him? Did he really love her for herself and not for him? He suddenly knew that what Margie had done, what she had declared, stemmed from within some sort of musical change, a new melodic entry into herself. You're gonna take three more breaths sitting here. And on that next inhalation, you're gonna blink your eyes open, if they weren't already. And then if you were sitting cross-legged, you're gonna swap the cross of your legs so the other foot is on front, in, in front or on top, depending on how you like to sit, I'm gonna stay as I am. If you're kneeling or sitting with your legs out in front of you, you don't need to move. Dropping your hands down by your sides. On your next inhalation, you're gonna reach your right arm up. And then as you exhale, you're gonna flex over towards the left. Now make sure that the right sit bone is still on the mat, that you're not reaching so far over that you tip over. You can use your left hand to press down to help you here. Breathing into that side of the body that's all opened out now. Have another breath here. Inhale yourself up into the center, keep that arm reaching up high. And as you exhale, you're gonna to twist towards the left and drop your hand outside your left knee or your left thigh and gently press into that to help you twist a bit more. You can move this left hand behind you. Keep sitting up tall though. Keep that lifted feeling because that helps with the twist and keeps it safer. One more breath here. Exhale, just swell yourself around to the front. Inhale, that left arm's coming up. It reaches really high. Before you exhale, lateral flex to the side. Now we're keeping the left sit bone down on the mat. We're trying not to let it lift up and pop up. Press into the right hand if it helps. Keep the shoulder lifted so the chest feels open. Another breath. And then inhale up into the center. The arm reaches even higher than you thought it was. Exhale, you're twisting around to the right now. 
Use that hand, gentle pressure to twist you a little further. Sitting as tall as you can. Last breath. Exhale, swirl yourself around to the front. You can give your shoulders a quick shuffle and then releasing your legs out in front of you if they're not already, just straight out in front of you. Hope you all enjoy that my cushion today has a moomin on it. Really important things to bear in mind. You're sitting tall, your toes are just gently, gently lifting up. Sit bones got equal weight in between them, long body. And on your next exhalation, you're slowly going to fold yourself forwards. Take your time. There is no rush. We're still at the beginning of the class, so you probably won't be able to press yourself right down immediately. And that is okay. You don't need to worry about having your hands on your feet, especially if it means that the shoulders get dragged up by the ears. Try to keep them back and down. Keep the chest open, the spine feeling long, not feeling too curled and crunched over. Think about your sit bones tipping back behind you and feel how that helps you to lengthen forwards a little bit more from the hips and from the waist. Paschimottanasana, a seated forward fold. You're trying to move with your breath if you can. The inhale lengthens you forwards, the exhale softens you down. Three more breaths here. Next inhalation, gently sit yourself upright. As you exhale, you can just cross your ankles and rock yourself forwards to come to all fours, or you can swing your legs around to the side so that you come into all fours. Next exhalation, you're gonna tuck your toes behind you and push up and back into a downward dog. So you're making that inverted V shape. You are aiming to have your hands shoulder width apart and your feet hip width apart. You're aiming to press each joint of each finger firmly into the mat so that you can feel the whole area of the hands against the mat. You're pressing your chest back towards your feet and you're looking at either your feet or your knees. If you try looking at your knees and it feels a bit unpleasant in the back of your neck, just look at your feet instead. Press the chest back. Gently squeeze the heels towards the mat. They don't need to touch the mat. They're just going in that direction. Keep breathing steadily. Two more breaths here. On your next inhalation, you're gonna bend your knees and look forwards and then softly walk your feet towards your hands, leaving them hip width apart, not worrying if you can't get them very close in and you're gonna softly have a forward fold, an Uttanasana. So make sure the head is heavy, you're not trying to hold that up and that the arms are heavy too. You don't have to have your hands hanging in space or even on the mat. You can hold your elbows if you prefer. You don't have to have straight legs. You can give them a really deep bend. The only things that we want to concentrate on here are that we have our weight forwards in the balls of the feet, not in the heels. And that the upper body, the arms, the shoulders, the neck are relaxed and heavy. Two more breaths. On your next inhalation, gently roll yourself upright, take your time. So have a little bend in the knees if you didn't already. Shoulders roll back at the top, the gaze lifts, and if you're not there already, you're gonna to move to the front of your mats. I'm gonna do this with slightly bent legs throughout. You don't have to, but you're also welcome to. Can be 
some nice work on the quads if you like. On your next inhalation, you're going to stretch up. Exhale, fold all the way forwards. Inhale, lift your fingertips or higher, look forwards. Exhale, step your right foot back and then your left, drop your knees, your chest and your chin, elbows back. Inhale, you can drop the belly down now, lift just the upper chest, this is your cobra. Exhale, roll your way back into a downward dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look towards your hands, the right foot is stepping in, then the left. Exhale as you fold. Inhale, sweeping yourselves up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, coming all the way down. Inhale, prepare, so fingertips or higher. Exhale, left foot's going to step all the way back, then the right, drop your knees, your chest, your chin. Inhale, drop your belly, lift just the upper chest, cobra. Exhale, rolling back, downward dog. Inhale, bend your knees, look forwards, left foot stepping in, then the right. Exhale as you fold. Inhale, sweeping up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, folding forwards. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, stepping your feet back. If you're familiar with it, you can lower down through a chaturanga, otherwise it's knees, chest, chin. Inhaling either cobra or upward facing dog if you're familiar with it. And exhale, making your way back, downward dog. Let's have three breaths here. Inhale, bend those knees, look forwards, stepping your feet in. Exhale as you fold. And inhale, sweeping all the way up. Exhale, ready for our first variation. Next inhalation, reaching up. Exhale, coming down. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, get your feet back, lowering yourself down. Either way, it's up to you. If you know them both, use the one that you're most comfortable with. Exhale, making your way back. Inhale, lift your right leg up nice and high. Exhale, step the foot through in between your hands. Your left leg is really straight and strong. Inhale, reach the arms up. So my leg is a bit bent, but here I want your left leg to be really straight. You're pushing through the left heel, bending firmly into that right leg here in your lunge. Reach up high. One more breath. Next exhalation very carefully with some control. Lower that left knee to the mat. Untuck the toes. Whoop. Keeping your arms up. Mine came down to put my cushion there. You are absolutely welcome to use props of any kind whenever you need. Again, I talk a little bit about props and what you can use just around your house, your living space in the introduction to yoga video. Last breath here. Keeping the hips moving forwards. On your next exhalation, you're gonna drop your right hand down towards your mat. It's gonna feel quite far away to the floor and you're probably only gonna be able to put your fingertips down. That's fine, that's normal. Reach the left hand as far over as you can. You're still keeping the hips moving forward. So we're still opening that side body like we did at the beginning. One more breath. Inhale, come back into the center so the right arm comes up. Exhale, drop that left hand down. This side should feel a tiny bit easier. Inhale, reach the right arm over. Hips still reach forwards though. Two more breaths here. Inhale, come up into the center. Right, left arm lift, sorry. And straighten up that right leg. Pull the right toes gently up towards you, keep your hips square, and as you next exhale, you're gonna fold over that right leg. You don't have to put your hands on the mat. You can have them on your hips if you prefer, or on props if you like using them. Trying to keep the body nice and long though. Extend over that right leg. Last breath. On your next inhalation, just shift the weight forwards into the right foot, tuck those back toes, stepping back into your downward dog. One breath. 
Ready for you on your inhale to lift the left leg up. Exhale, step the foot through. Do not worry, you have to wiggle your foot around. Inhale the arms up. Strong, straight right leg, push into that right heel. Reach high. One more breath here. Steady with control on the next exhalation. You just start to lower that right knee down, untuck the toes, the hips sink further forwards as the arms reach higher up in your Anjani Asana, your crescent lunge. You can look up if you like. Some people like doing that because it adds to the curve of the spine, which is partly why it's called a crescent lunge. But if your neck feels uncomfortable, that's fine. On your next exhalation, you're dropping the left hand first this time, the one that feels a bit tighter. Reach that right arm over. Keep the hips moving forwards. Breathe into that right hand side of the body. Plenty of extra space. Inhale your way into the center. So left arm's coming up. Exhale, right hand down now. Reaching the left arm over. Hips are still reaching forwards. Another breath here. Ready to inhale up into the center. As you do, that left leg is going to straighten. Left toes pull up, hips are square. Exhale, slowly reaching forward. So remember, the hands don't have to come down. They can just be swinging back towards the hips. Or they can come onto props. Your left leg will be straight. You're trying to extend over the leg. You're not worrying how close to the leg you're coming. Keep the body long, concentrate on that instead. Think about pressing the seat back as you stretch the chest forwards. Last breath here. And next inhalation, you're going to shift that weight forwards into the front foot, tuck your back toes, stepping back, downward dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look towards your hands, stepping your feet in, exhale as you fold. And inhale, sweeping your way up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, folding forwards. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, get those feet back. Lowering down, inhaling in your back bend. Exhale, up and back, downward dog. Inhale, lift that right leg up. Exhale, step the foot through. Swing your left heel on the mat. Inhale, cartwheel the arms, so left arm's coming up and over. Your left leg is straight. Bending into that right leg, look over the right fingernails, and you're in your warrior two, your Virabhadrasana two. So the hips are open, the shoulders are open, but the gaze and the sort of intention, if you like, is forwards over the right knee. Another breath. Next exhalation, you're going to drop your hands behind you, clasp your fingers together, push the clasped hands down, feel how that puffs the chest up. And as you next exhale, you're going to start to dive your chest forwards inside your right thigh. Once you've come as low as you want to go, you're going to lift the arms up and over. Do not worry how far over they come. Just keep them straight. Try not to rest on the right thigh. I know it's tempting. This is your humble warrior, and I promise it's easier if you just give into it. One more breath. Next exhalation, keep the body low, release your hands, drop them inside your right foot, lift the left heel. Oh, I'm going to put my left knee down, but if you can, you're going to keep your left leg straight. Inhale, gaze forwards. Exhale. If you want, you can lower your chest down. So maybe you put your forearms down, maybe you bend your arms slightly, or just keep the arms straight. It's still a hip stretch. That's the aim here. It's harder work if you keep that back leg straight. So if for any reason it's not working for you, like it hurts, if something hurts, you don't want to do it. So if that's happening or it's just too much, then you can drop your back knee like mine is now. Two more breaths here. Inhale. 
Next inhalation, you're going to straighten up the arms if they weren't already. And as you exhale, push into those hands so you can slide the right foot back, lift it all the way up as it comes up. And at the top, open your hips and bend that right leg. So you're still looking back towards the left foot, but now turn the gaze to look underneath the right hand side of the body and lift that right knee higher than you were already. You want to have a sense that you're really opening out through the whole right hand side of the body because you're looking underneath the right hand arm, uh, the right side of the chest, so underneath the right armpit. You're twisting slightly as that knee comes up and over, so the whole right hand side of the torso should feel opened out. And the hip is nice and open. Last breath here. Before you exhale, carefully put your right foot down. Have a breath. Ready to inhale the left leg up. Exhale, step the foot through, right heel swings down. Inhale, cut with those arms. So it's the right arm that comes up and over into your warrior two, your Virabhadrasana two. You're looking over the left fingernails now, shoulders open, hips open, bend into that left leg, push into your right heel. Feeling strong here, feeling steady. Next exhalation, hands are dropping down behind you. Clasp the fingers together, push those clasped hands down, chest puffs up. Exhale, slowly dive forwards into your humble warrior. Arms coming up and over as far as they will. Just keep them straight and then you're doing it just perfectly. Try not to rest on the left thigh. I know how tempting that can be, but just let yourself sink towards the floor in your humble warrior. Last breath. Next exhalation, let go of those hands, but keep the chest low. Drop your hands inside the left foot. Inhale, you're lifting that right heel so that you're in a lunge with the hands down. And as you exhale here again, you can stay as you are, or you can come a little bit lower if that's appropriate for your hips. If it feels far too tight, you don't need to do it. This is still a hip stretch with the arms straight. Push into that right heel if the knee is up. Keep the breath steady. Two more. Inhale, straighten up the arms if they weren't already. And as you exhale, sweep that left leg back and all the way up. Inhale at the top and exhale, open the hips, bend that left leg, the lifted leg. Now see if you can look underneath the left hand side of the body. Keep that left knee high. Feel how we have that opening sensation all the way down the left-hand side of the body. Two more breaths. Next exhalation, just carefully drop the left foot down. Inhale here. And exhale, you're going to drop your knees to the mat. And you are going to either cross your ankles behind you and sit back or swing your legs around. Try to keep the movement going so that when you've got your legs forwards, you just gently pick your feet up off the mat. See if you can get your feet to be level with your knees. Bring your knees together. Reach your arms forwards. Navasana, boat pose. If you like, you can do this with straight legs. You do not have to. All we're going to do is hold this for another three breaths. Think about the chest lifting, but the shoulders are down. One more breath. And as you next exhale, try and gently straighten the legs, lower them to the mat, so with some control. Sit tall, long spine, and exhale, folding yourself forwards. Paschimottanasana. Another seated forward fold like we did at the beginning of the class. Maybe this one feels a little softer, a little easier. We're still trying to lengthen over the legs though, rather than worry about pressing to ourselves too far down. We're not concerned whether our hands are on our feet or not. They can be on the mat. Two more breaths.
the inhale, sit yourself upright. And exhale, roll yourself down to lie on your back. We're gonna take a minute or so of rest here at the end of the class. If lying flat on your back does not work for you, and it doesn't work for lots of people, so there's nothing wrong with you if that's the case, then try bending your feet in. If you don't like the feeling of having to hold your legs up, just knock your knees together and separate your feet a little bit so that the weight is taken by each leg. You can have your hands down, palm up on the mat, or you can rest them on your belly if you prefer. You're just looking for a position here that allows you to let go as far as is possible, to release effort as far as possible. Eyes are closed, breath is soft and steady. And you take this minute here to find a little bit of peace and stillness. He bent down, arranged the pillow on the floor tiles adjacent to the locked door, lay down and covered himself with a blanket. It felt right. For a moment it occurred to him that this slumber on the floor was the only one of all the slumbers that he hadn't stolen, that he didn't have to steal now, didn't have to earn dishonestly, since it was being given to him justly, with precisely the right measure of generosity and justice, because it contained precise coordination an appropriate suitability between what was inside and what was outside. Start to deepen your breath slightly so that the inhale becomes a little longer and the exhale a little fuller. And then use the attention and the awareness that the extra breath brings to wake up the whole body. So start at the extremities, bring a little movement into your fingers and your toes. And then when you're ready, you're gonna roll over onto your right hand side and just take a few seconds there. And then moving slowly, keeping your eyes closed if you can or your gaze soft, push yourself upright and make your way back into a Sukhasana. That was the easy seated pose that we started in. Whatever that looked like for you. Does not need to look the same as me. Be a bit confusing if it looked the same as me. Pressing the sit bones firmly into your mat with equal weight between them. Long, neutral spine, relax the belly, relax the shoulders, relax the muscles of the face too. Breath is soft and rhythmic. Even with these very short classes, try to find that time at the end to just peace out on your mat. Try to round off that movement with that release. When I said at the beginning of the class that it's not over yet, I realized while I was teaching and moving that perhaps that was a little um, downbeat. I just mean to say that although the light is very much at the end of the tunnel, it will be a while before we can recalibrate things in a way that feels much better and not more natural for us. We've still got a lot more that we can learn from this situation, a lot of ways that we can become more resilient. And this novel is just one of the ways at looking at the times that we are moving through currently. It asks us to take a much more compassionate view towards resistance. And that's resistance of any kind. It doesn't just need to be one single person not doing what you want them to do. This whole situation that we're living in is a form of resistance. 
it asks us to learn new possibilities from absence. And there is still more that we can learn from the absences that we are experiencing. We can still find more compassion in our approach to them. Blinking your eyes open if they're not already. Thank you so much for doing this class with me today. Again, my name is Jess. I think that my Instagram handle or something like that is in, uh, is in the caption. So you can always contact me there anytime. If you desperately want to ask me a question, then you can either ask me through Instagram or you can get in touch with the sports center. They can always put you in touch with me. Um, and I will answer any question you like about yoga or otherwise. And I hope that you will come and do another one of these practices with me again soon. Thank you.